This is not what we typically film when we're doing political stories. It's all part of understanding the process and what Dr. Kelly does for work every day. So I pulled it out of his scalp. It goes he right side to the left side, and then it embeds under his scalp. You can actually see it there on the x-ray. You see the arrow, the scroll, that yeah. little radio pig fragment. Yeah. That's this guy. So it mushroomed a little bit and then came to rest in the scalp. It was suicide in this yeah. case? Yeah, so complete the gunshot wound, yeah. Every one of these cases is the single worst thing that's probably ever happened to one of these families. Yes. Right? Like, we only see the worst of the worst, so we only see the tragedy. So every one of these represents a massive bomb dropped into some family's life. Um, and so we certainly feel the weight of that, even if we go about it in a very clinical, professional manner, um, it's still there. You still feel it. Yeah. Seems like you're a little emotional about it. Uh, it it's, it's sort of a sacred job to help um, these families in these difficult moments. Dr. Leon Kelly's role here as El Paso County's coroner might not seem like it has anything to do with politics, but in Colorado, it's an elected position. This is an incredibly sophisticated laboratory, and, and to run it, you need a medical director. I'm not only a forensic pathologist, but I'm an anatomic pathologist and a clinical pathologist. So I'm board certified in three different areas. Because I have that laboratory clinical pathology training, it allows me to run this laboratory. And on June 28th, he'll be on the Republican primary ballot against Dr. Ray Ann Weber, who was not any of those things Dr. Kelly just listed. Legally, she's not required to be in order to run for this office. Dr. Weber is a family physician who dabbles in both COVID and election conspiracies. Vice News reached out to her requesting an interview. She did not respond. We the people deserve hand count of paper ballots. This would be accurate and it would be cheap. The machines and the lockdowns have brought our country to its knees. You all sat here and listened to Coroner Kelly and listened to his falsely inflated COVID death numbers, just like Dr. Fauci. Ma'am, this is about a contract with Runbeck. This is not a conversation about Coroner Kelly. So why is a doctor who's running for county coroner talking about voting machines and COVID conspiracies? Because the GOP obsession with both has made it good politics. This county meeting back in April was supposed to be about a contract with a company that prints ballots until local GOP activists turned it into another public confrontation over voting fraud conspiracies. Here we are, the people telling you that the election system does not deserve or have our trust, nor does anyone who stands by it. To believe otherwise is to be a conspiracy theorist or to be deemed a domestic terrorist. Really? America witnessed vote flipping real time on the television. Bottom line, we need to get rid of the machines. Thank you. <laughs> President Joe Biden handily won Colorado in the 2020 election, but pockets of the state are still very red. Right-wing activists made fraud allegations in El Paso County, but several investigations found no evidence. But there's an audience for these conspiracies, and so several candidates here are now running on this platform. Do you trust the 2020 election results? No, I do not. Peter Lupia wants to be the head of elections in El Paso County because he says he doesn't trust the outcome of the 2020 elections. Part of the conversation at the El Paso meeting earlier today um, was a lot of people talking about hand counting ballots in the next election. Is that something you support and is that feasible? Uh, yes, it is my number one, actually my campaign platform is to return to hand counting ballots until we get technology of some variety that is simplified enough that we know what's going on inside the machines. Um, hand counting is the only way that we can put eyes on it. Hand counting ballots is the latest fad among election deniers. It could significantly slow down ballot counting and farm it out to local precincts with fewer security controls. Many of the Colorado candidates pushing this kind of thing are appearing at forums and promotional events together, but only one so far has managed to ride the conspiracies to a shot at higher office. 
Tina Peters has been indicted on election tampering charges. Does that make her a trustworthy vehicle for elections in this state? If Tina Peters were indicted and everybody was shown a bunch of evidence that she had done something wrong, I would say we need to we need to be careful about what we're doing with her. She did hand over the material though to an outside person, right? She, she invited in a Is that forensic something that report. You would do uh -huh. a absolutely. She invited in experts. You would give the material to an outside. I would person? have outside people come in, absolutely, experts in the field. Even if it was breaking the law? It didn't break the law. She, she, has, a, she has a sworn duty to do that, and there, there's no law in place in Colorado that does not allow a clerk to forensically audit. Tina Peters is accused of real crimes, but she's given others, like Lupia, the sense that it's the right thing to do. Peters is the county clerk and recorder in Mesa County and is now running for the Colorado Secretary of State role, which would put her in control of elections there. She's accused of fraud and impersonation for concocting a fake ID to help someone copy voting machine information, which was later leaked online. Peters was indicted on 11 charges. In mid-May, a judge determined that Peters was not fit to administer the 2022 election in Mesa County. <laughs> the big lie. Actually, whenever you hear that from now on, think it's the Democrats' big cry. They're crying over the fact that we caught them in their dirty deeds. You spoke a little bit on the, the podium up there about the raid on your home, the indictments that you're facing. Um, do you think that you did anything wrong? And no, they wouldn't need to pass a law against what I did if what I did was already illegal. So that's all I'm going to say right now. Peters is running for now, but the governor signed a new law making it illegal to administer elections in the state if you've been convicted of election tampering. Ms. Peters, can you just kind of talk to me about, do you expect people to trust you if you have been indicted on election tampering charges, ma'am? Ma'am, those election tampering charges? Excuse me. Yep. I gotta get to. Excuse oh, me. Okay. So, Thank um, you. So, please Thank don't you. touch me, sir. Don't touch you for touching me, so sorry. She doesn't just have the support of in-state election deniers. Her legal fund got an $800,000 boost from the My Pillow guy. Mike Landell is spending millions on this effort around the country, while simultaneously being sued for the lies he's spreading. A Denver-based voting machine company called Dominion is going after him for $1.3 billion. You have here in Colorado the key to the whole nation because you had a great county clerk, Tina Peters, that did her job. Why endorse Tina Peters and support her when she's been charged right now? She wouldn't uh, with have been charged if the evidence tampering. would have. Those are drummed up charges. You They're don't think the FBI had any reason to be investigating any of this? You think all of these charges are fake? They're all fake. They're all drummed up. Every one of them. Every one of them. Have you had conversations recently with former President Trump about your efforts? And do I talk about my efforts? Yeah, like your election efforts that you've. What does that? What does he have to do about? with what I'm doing? Well, aren't you doing this because you think that he won the election? No, no, see, you're under, you don't understand. It doesn't matter who won. They stole our election forever, forever and ever if we keep these machines. As Lindell says, this really isn't even about the former president anymore. The big lie doesn't need him. Colorado is an example of how questioning the election results to the point of disbelieving them has taken on a life of its own. I would never have dreamed years ago that I would be standing in front of you and telling you that the coroner's race in El Paso County is one of the most important races we have this year. Do you see election denialism, specifically of the 2020 election, seeping into this race, and how? Absolutely. My, uh, the other candidate running for coroner has spent more time talking about elections and voting machines and mail-in ballots far more than she's talked about investigating deaths and what she's going to do about homicides and fentanyl and suicides and all the things that the coroner actually does. It's, it's frightening. Um, countywide offices, um, you know, the clerk and recorder, the coroner, the sheriff, the treasurer, um, these are, the, these are the, the boots on the ground in a community. This is really where the rubber meets the road, where everyday citizens interact with their government. Their expectation should be government is competent and it's there when I need it and it gets out of the way when I don't. That's every American's goal with their government. That will not happen if some of these people are elected to these positions.
I'm Michael Learmonth, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.